The Lagos State Government has promised to provide 545 plots of land to Shangisha landlords as compensation to end the land dispute between them and the Magudu Residents Association. The move is an agreement reached by parties following Wednesday's meeting presented over by Governor Babajide Songolu. Adedoja Salamadini has this report and then we get into our discussion now. 24 hours after the protest by residents of Magodo Phase 2 over the occupation of armed policemen in the estate and the eventual intervention of Governor Sonwolu, all roads led to Alaosa. Hours after waiting at the press center, journalists were called to the state house where the meeting is holding. Top government officials joined Governor Sonwolu to host the stakeholders in the Magodo age long land tussle. The governor noted that the meeting jointly agreed that the committee earlier constituted by the government should commence work in earnest. Immediately meaning from Friday, they would be working with all of the stakeholders at identifying available plots of land around the Shangisha area. Drones will be flown, surveys will be made in the event that there are identified plots, allocations will be made timely, and um, what um, additional plots, if, if, if we don't have the, the right number there, will also be identified at agreeable, mutually agreeable location with the other stakeholders. And the government will also review the list of all of the allotties, 549 of them. He added that his administration would work towards ensuring a win-win situation. Chairman of the Shangisha Landlords Association, Chief Adebayo Adeiga, told the media shortly after the meeting that they will give the state government the benefit of the doubt to execute their agreement. The demand is the remaining land there should be given to Shangisha Landlords Association. The rest will be, they will pay uh, on ratification. They pay gratuity to us because we are not going to move on to another place. All parties have agreed to what the government, uh, the governor proposed, and we are very happy. All parties, including the police. So there's nothing to add. We will go along with the governor, and we hope that. All decisions taken inside that hall will be implemented speedily. The meeting had in attendance representatives of the Shangisha Landlords Association, Magodo Residents Association, and the State Commissioner of Police, Hakim Odumusu. With the intervention of Governor Babajide Sonwolu, the 38 years journey of a land tussle is getting a headway. But this is just the beginning of a process that will require more fine tuning. Adidoja Salam Adini, TVC News, Lego. All right, that's a background to our discussion. So, uh, joining us now to bring perspectives to this issue is development analyst and leadership strategist, Dr. John Ekundaya. It's nice to have you, Dr. Ekundaya. And uh, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now, um, I, I know you've been following this development, uh, the, the judge from the judgment to the protest to uh governor's intervention and the meetings and outcomes and all of that resolutions are made and all of that but some persons looking at the issue uh, had said that this issue shouldn't have been this controversial what what do you think makes it a little more difficult to handle yeah let me just say this that uh, you see people just look at you know the, the top of the matter mm -hmm. they didn't really dig the down okay. you know to this matter this whole issue started during the military uh, uh, interregnum mm. and, and it's not just now and uh, of course when you come to government just like any office the assets and the liabilities yeah, of course, become they yours, are yours and you have to take over so we have to give kudos to the equipment governor of Lagos State Mr. Obajide Ulu in handling this case is it because good you know judgment have been uh, obtained from the Supreme Court, and that's the higher court in the land. And uh, in, a, in, a, in a democratically elected government, as we have in Lagos State, you have to obey court rules. But then, also, in a situation like this, 
<laughs> it calls for calm because the present uh, uh, occupant of the land have their own CO2 mm. given to them the by the government. All right. So, is it so bringing all this issue coming from Abuja and the rest of it, you know, is uncalled for. It, it's really uncalled for. It's unfortunate because uh, I was reading somewhere yesterday and someone said, okay, you still have to, on a particular platform, that, oh, enforce the judgment. And I say, well, at the cost of, at the loss of limbs and lives, is it enforcing judgment? What kind of judgment? Is it jungle justice? You see, so all parties have to come together, which have been done in this situation mm. on the table. And, you know, not just moving bulldozers and say, how can you, you, even one person there in that estate has a uh, property worth of just one property, 500 million, possibly mm. even one billion. And then you know how many. Then I say you are enforcing judgment. You see, so. I, I, issues have to be looked at in the analytically, you see, and then even when there is judgment, you see, this should, should just be like a case study for others that may still come, you see, during the time of uh, military intervention, you know, that some, some things have happened, and then people now obtain the judgment, one thing or the other, I found cases of uh, where people have to pay for their land twice mm -hmm. again. You know, my junior brother was involved like that somewhere in the uh, Sangwata area. He has to pay for his land again the second time after he had been living in the house. And you have so many cases like that in Lagos, you know, and possibly in Ogun State. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is just a, a, a kind of a case study that has to, uh, you know, be is a, is a good one, the way it's handled. And, uh, but it calls for caution. All you. right. There are about 549. Alotis. The Alotis we're talking about here. That is a full community. Yeah. How, how challenging would that... Uh, the governor has said, okay, we will look in the Shangisha area. If we have land enough or plots of land enough to give to these people, mm -hmm. then we'll do it. If we don't have enough, then we can allot lands within Shangisha for those that are enough and then look for somewhere else that is agreeable. But talk to us about how challenging it will be to settle this 549 people it's really challenging because uh Shangisha, that's the island where mm. we are now <laughs> it's a bit of area you see you are not talking of a place like imota mm. you know like could see where you still you have, have virgin lands. Lands. where you have virgin land mm. or even leki you okay. see and that was what the government was proposing you see in fact what it's just unfortunate that this thing is coming up now you see, because there have been previous government that, you know, had not even given audience to uh, uh, this uh, other party like this. Mm -hmm. So, that is coming up, and the government is proposing, oh, Ibejuleki can be good for you. I think they should have talked over that and agree and say, oh, okay, but you know, the value of land there, maybe it's not like the value here. Mm. So, what compensation are you giving us? <laughs> you no, know, it shouldn't have gotten to this level and then going to Abuja, contacting the powers that be there. You see, and that's still called for the issue of federalism. You see, we we'll keep on talking about this. Whether this present National Assembly like it or not, it will come to this issue. That's, that's just what I want to say on this, mm. on, on this matter, you know. And also, you see, you can see the involvement of police to enforce the judgment. It is wrong, you see. And for the old governor to appear at the scene, you know, and you know, with that video going viral, and you see, the uh, 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 chief superintendent of police, with the temerity addressing the governor that way, it's uncalled for. You know, it's, it's upsetting. It shouldn't have even happened, you know, in a federal uh, 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 system of government that we say we're on. So mm, it's, show, it's clear to the whole world that we are not running federalism. It's not. It is still unitary government that the military be created to us. And it's unfortunate that, you know, the, 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 the state actors in Abuja, they can't read this. They don't even understand this. And the whole Nigerians should now be looking at 2023. This is where we need to interrogate whoever wants to lead us in 2023. You see, they have to have this emotional intelligence and intellectual capacity to, to, to carry us on. You see, because, you know, I look at it, there are so many accidental leaders. I've been saying it, and I will keep on saying it. Accidental leaders, you see, uh, uh, even people that they don't prepare for leadership, they just have leadership trusted on them. And then when they get there on that seat, they don't even know what to do. And you see now people leading them as you have a, the guide or blinds, you know, leading them. It's unfortunate. And we have to move on from here. All right. T talking about the issue of uh, federalism, the, the point there is uh, at this point where we are issues about land and land-related matters mm. uh, 
constitutionally falls on the table of the state Government. governments because it's on the residual list yeah. of the uh, constitution. constitution. Now, where we, a few days ago, where we saw, like you were making reference to uh, Chief Superintendent of uh, CSP of Police, you know, when the governor went there to say, okay, stand down for now and let us see how call we can resolve, superior. you know, he, he was saying, okay, we cannot stand down. Okay, call your superiors. Okay, fine. <laughs> uh, with all due respect, uh, you have to, <laughs> to I am too little, I'm too small. So you, ha you can do that call, you know, and so, and so on. Now, the point there is a lot of people had talked about the issue of what the interest of the federal government is in a case or matter that is originally within the jurisdiction or powers of the state government. Mike, you know what? You see, if we have followed the true federal structure, mm -hmm. like you have the United States of America and other countries, you have state police. You see, you know, and in matters of state police, issues within the jurisdiction of the state, federal police will not have anything to do with it, like in the United States of America. Mm -hmm. You know? So, it's, that's why this our federal structure is flawed and it's unthinkable for our you know for for for, for state actors at, especially at the federal level you see and even the apc government the ruling government you see because this was one of their campaign promises and they set up a panel you know uh, governor fireman was there in that panel governor rufai was there in that panel and they made a recommendation i was watching the interview of a uh, uh, governor of Ekiti state my home state is on a rice television brilliant uh, you know uh, uh, this thing and he said well we put this thing at the door of the national assembly the top step of the national assembly and you see that's why for me i keep on criticizing this national assembly you see because I don't know. There are some other German issues. Like that one was put there. Now imagine I could hear the, the president speaking yesterday and say, well, in the both houses, we are majority, my party. Oh, for what? Are we moving forward? You see, that we have the majority. Imagine such a German issue like that. That all the APC, got, they, they agree on and they put with the doorstep of the National Assembly. And nothing, not even a finger has been lifted, is there. To, to just be on the on the on the shelf. So we are we, we are, what are we really talking about? And these are German issues because if we had a state police there, state police will have ad educated on the we will have educate on the issue. You see, there wouldn't have been any standard with the governor at all. You see, because when you are talking about enforcement of this thing, is the federal police has nothing to do with this. In fact, that's not even the process. And all the lands in the state they are vested in the governor. Is it just like this party now? Is it? I was just thinking that's a scenario that could happen. Is it moving borders in and uh, you do this, you do that? Supposing there's a court injunction again by the, those landlords because they have those people living there now. Yeah. They have CFO no, of and they go to court. Mm. Is it? They will say, okay, status quo. Yeah. Status you know, quo remains. So mm -hmm. stay. And then why doing that? Do you know the governor has the power? I don't know whether the point in Abuja, mm -hmm. do they know that the governor has the power to still say, okay, you know what? Even the, the, the whatever this thing on this land, you see, because the governor can give CFO and cancel CFO, mm. just like that, mm. by fiat. And you have uh, any reason, he can just tell you, maybe for public peace. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's why I'm, I'm doing, <laughs> yes, because I want peace in my domain. <laughs> you can cancel that, your, your, the, the so-called nation. Mm. That you say where well, you get from the Supreme Court. So that's the power of the governor. You see, but just to make sure there is peace, and I love the statement that Governor Babajide Olusha Lassan will make. He said, Look, all the people involved, they are, they are my subjects, mm. and I want peace. And that's the tango for the way it will be amicably mm. resolved. Now, talking about the issue of a state police that you talked about, yes, uh, you, you, you mentioned, uh, the president in his uh, interview uh, yesterday, uh, just about 24 hours ago, uh, was uh, kind of putting a closure to the issue of state police, saying that uh, it will be abused by, you know, these were initial arguments and debate around the issues of uh, state police here and there. And it, it looks like uh, he is putting a closure to it as to state police is not warranted at this time and all of that. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's, that was the verdict of the president because I watched that interview. You see, what I, I have to say is that... Uh, uh, those people who are near the president, <laughs> like the AG, <laughs> you see, they are not doing this government, you know, they are not doing this government a favor, I mean, a, any kind of good. To me, that I see, you see, there shouldn't be a foreclosure on that, you see, really. You see, because look at issues coming up. Farmers, hard man, uh, clash, you know, this and that, you see. 
and if not because the Southwest took it upon themselves to have their Manteku, do you think we, we, we still be, you know, we won't be at this stage now. It will have been more lives and limbs will have been lost. So the issue of state police for 2023, like I said earlier, I'm saying it now, is left for the followers. Whether the politicians will come to you again, somebody will call and say, I, I want to be your president, and you'll not be able to interrogate him. The professional bodies, the MBAs, they should be listening now. You see, the, 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 all the bodies, the professional bodies, instead of directors and the rest, it's not time. I've said it. You are late. You are the problem of this nation. Because you always sit down, you mind your business. And let me tell you, it's not good. Even that your business you want to mind now, political institutions will govern that business. So they can mess it up for you. So it is time for us to fully participate and interrogate whoever wants to be president in 2023. Look, is this on your table? Is this not? Tell us now. We want to know. Mm. And then we, we will hold you accountable. In fact, we'll be monitoring you and tracking you. You know, it's not just that you make campaign promises. APC made many campaign promises. The only time of PDP2, they made many. But where are we? Even after almost seven years after, where are we mm. now? But the, the point there is, isn't that part of the challenge? Because a anyone can make promises and anyone can assure that I have this in my kitty, I have this as my plan, I have this as my promises, and all of that. Yet, when they get into Power. office, it could be totally something different. So, the, the, what difference does the promise and assurances make? I all the articulates, you know, uh, uh, putting together of all of the ideas and concepts and all of that, what does it amount to at the end of the day? Now, so people are following this trajectory mm. in governance, you see, and that's what I expect. That's why I, I you know, when we had the break the other time, mm. I was talking about accidental leaders, mm. you know, accidental governors. I've said it in the forum. I'm saying it again. You see, because many of the people that we have in position today, you see, they are just there. They push them there, you know. Some of them, because they say, oh, I have money. Okay, I can run. They don't have the vision. They don't have the foresight. They don't even have the insight where we are coming from. You see, so people now that are studying the trajectory, we know, okay, this issue are coming on. This issue have been on. State police, we are talking about federalism. We are talking about restructuring. You see, they should be people who are well known. I mean, they know, they know this issue. That's what I mean. Mm. They know these issues. So when they now get to office, now, it may be possible that there are some things that is not as they thought. But then, it's not that they won't lift their finger. It's not that they won't even do anything about, uh, 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 about it at all, you know, and they just say, no, it can't be done. Then, there's no, we, are, we are not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. All over the world where you have democracy, you have issues that are lined up, one, two, three, four, five. At least we'll see you doing one, two, three. We'll see you doing it. I remember the time uh, the governor, Baba, Baba, Baba Tunde Raji Fashola, was in Lagos State because I interviewed him as part of my uh, PhD, something I did on him. And one of the things he said, look, even before I became governor, I went round all the local government. And I tell them, look, I, give me three things that should be done, that you want, priority, mm. school, uh, hospital, some people listed. He said, now, after almost one time, because I interviewed him in 2010 in his office, 1st of November, I remember, mm. after almost rounding up, he said, go back to this local government and find out the three may not have been done, but at least one have been done. Mm. In fact, in some cases, the third one is on in some places second one is on that is governance you see because meeting those people you factor the followers uh, uh, aspiration and ambitions in so it is level of followers in 2023 no leader nobody should just bamboozle you see we need to list for them these are our priorities we want this we want this we want that tell us now where you are going mm -hmm. and then we put it on record and thank god internet does not lie so this, this yeah is the way forward uh, uh, I, I totally agree agree with that but however the the point there is Nigerians would want something more practical and something that is uh, that brings results. Now the point there is anyone can that's what I'm saying anyone yeah. can agree to all of those and then by the time they get into the office yeah. based on the promises you have made and based on the assurances you've given and we give the mandate even if we hold you accountable by all this speaking and all of that what difference does it really make especially when it, it, the way it is, it's quite challenging to either get a chief executive to leave office except by an impeachment situation or by incapacitation. Number two, when it comes to the issue of assembly members or legislature, how cumbersome it is to recall any member that is not doing well. So if you check the mechanism, anyone who gets into office, the only time he can get out is at the end of his tenure. 
it's, it's just unfortunate, Mike, uh, because I will still say some of these things lie at the doorstep. Or mm -hmm. we follow us. Yeah. You see, I agree with you. When I, okay, four years, okay, I want my four years here. You see, but not just the governor now focusing on the governors, not just the president focusing mm. on, the, on the president. It is high time, let me say this, it is high time Nigerians took, you see, seriously the House of Assembly election. It's high time Nigerians took seriously the National Assembly elections. You see, because I've found out, I participated in elections in time past. Normally, when we vote governor, when we vote for the president, mm. we just relax. Who is next? Okay, is it an APC or PDP? Okay, this state is PDP state. Let me vote. Mm. <laughs> you see, we don't even look at the antecedents. Mm. You see, we just look at, oh, uh, she be, this state is APC. Yeah, let me just vote the candidate of, uh, uh, you know, if it's APC state, let me vote. Then if it's another state, you know, maybe Anambra is PDP state, or say, okay, let me vote PDP for National Assembly. You see, whereas you have a guy there, maybe he's not even from a popular party, mm. I, we, we know the community knows the, 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 the entire local government know this is the time for us to bring such people to power you see to the national assembly so that we know they could represent the constituents very mm. well you see because like i said you see uh, uh, the president national assembly they have not lived up to to that to that billing and that's why you see nobody can be recalled anyhow the process is so mm. cumbersome see so these are the issues to address in 2023 is it going forward that okay you are going to the national assembly now we want this we want that you see because our democracy is nascent but we have to begin to just put some things there so that we can grow hmm. that's that's just what i would say all right uh, move, moving forward because you've talked about the issue of 2023 and it, it is big this year the 2022 will be a very charged yeah. up year this when it comes the, to the year of the primary exactly and a lot of things are already happening from late last year up until now we hear different kind of of course we'll also get the fake news of it when we hear oh this person is contesting the other person is contesting the other person has endorsed this person the other person has endorsed this person and all of that but in all of this the electorate the voter is the ultimate here because he's the one who ideally is meant to de decide who becomes what when and how mm. but how enlightened is the average Nigerian voter who decides who becomes leader at what point and at what level? That's a main challenge. Hmm. That's a main challenge. Uh, <laughs> you know, Nigerian, Nigerian followers or voters, let me put it, uh, we are so laid back. We are so like Kadasika. We are so docile. We are so alienated, separated from the system. You see, and when I talk about this, I'm, it's not just about level of education. Mm -hmm. In fact, those who are even less educated are more mm. educated politically. Yeah. Talk about the, you know, the, 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 the union of drivers. Mm -hmm. Talk about you know, the market men and women. Mm. Talk about artisans. Yeah. They are group. You see, and politicians know these people are more enlightened politically. And they use them. You see, monetize them, whatever thing, and induce them. And use them for election. You see, but people like us who are engineers, <laughs> lawyers, architects, and the rest, we bother less. Some will not even have PVC. Even when they have the PVC, they won't vote. So in 2022, it is good now. It's a preparatory year mm. for all of us. You see, especially the professional bodies. I mm. thank God, you know, the church also is coming up now. Mm. And it's saying that, you know. And, and even the mosques. Yes, they, okay. They are saying now, if you don't have this, we may not even do baptism or something for you. Whoa. We may not even do wedding for you. <laughs> yes! You see, because the church now have seen that <laughs> before. We are the back seat. And now you see these people in power. They don't even care for us anymore. So the, I, I remember one politician about that in those days saying, uh, you know, uh, to some Jews, say, well, you, uh, Christian, you don't know how to use your large number. We we'll help you to use them. Mm -hmm. You see, because knowing that the followers are not enlightened, so the politicians use them. So it is time now, and I want to speak to INEC now, they need to do more about voters' education. Mm. It is not enough. They are doing it, but it's not enough. I next should do more about voters' education. And the National Orientation Agency, I don't know what they are doing. I don't see them in the picture. It should be one of the major work that should be taken up. You see, and even in the NYC, it should be part of the thing, the orientation about political education, civic education, so that they will not disengage. All the, the things that happen at the NSAS, it's unfortunate, wouldn't have happened. So. If they, there's a need to do on followers' education, even from the secondary school, 
By the time we are at the age of 15, 16, 18, a lot to be done. So that, you know, the consciousness will get into them. By the yeah. time they are 18, they want to get their PVC. They also want to vote. Right. Many of our youth are not voting. On the day of election, they play football. Mm. <laughs> All right. We we'll look forward to a change this time around. Uh, people are getting more enlightened. And we hope that enlightenment will translate into the kind of... Uh, involvement that we are looking at. Dr. John Ekundayo, thank you so much for coming on the thank program. You, Mike. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Right.